Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're going to try something that I haven't found yet. Now, may, many of you might be familiar with this keyboard. This is the MK870 and I think this is a pretty much a big giveaway. It's got a USB port on either side that is covered up with a rubber plug, which is a little odd, but it doesn't really affect um, how this functions. Um, I've actually got two of these. One that's a, a clear white. And one that's a solid white. Now I have enjoyed these keyboards stock. Uh, very rarely do I stay with a keyboard stock, but I mean it's, it's not that bad. It is a tray mount, so it is a little harsher of a bottom mount, but it's not something that is going to fatigue fingers, or at least not for me anyway. So a little while ago, I came across a listing on AliExpress for a PC plate for the MK870, and I was like, what? Hmm. Now it is aftermarket. I did buy two plates from the shop. One was for the um, LK67 or the Tom 680, which a lot of you guys might know, and I did a video on that, and that made a huge difference changing out the plate as far as the sound goes. Um, now, granted, that LK67 uh, was modded, and in this situation, I went ahead and ordered one of their plates, which is here. Now, uh, first thing I must say is that when I first got it, it was all, it, basically, it, it was fully white, and it looked like it needed to be um, sanded down, each of the, because it had a bunch of little spurs everywhere, plastic spurs, but they were really soft. And then I actually started to file down a couple of the spots and noticed that I wasn't really getting anywhere and then realized that it was just a white protective film on either side. So once I removed it, here it is. As the plate is lacking uh, the notches for piece or plate mounted stabilizers, we are going to have to switch out to PCB mounted stabilizers, which I peeked in there and they do have the holes. So. We're going to get, be adding that as well. But regardless, both of these keyboards are stock, and I've gone ahead and done a stock sound test of this one. I'm, I've got them loaded with JWIC Blacks um, and DCX, uh, black on white. It's uh, the first set before they fix the sh. I think this should be interesting to find out how much of a difference, because like I said, this keyboard, it's pretty good. Um, I've got two FL Esports, or I've got these two MK870s from FL Esports, and I've got their Q75, and the Q75 too, it, it's lovely. Out of the box, it's just ready to go. The stabilizers are nice and stable. The board has a decent sound um, right off the bat, so I figured why not go ahead and try the PC plate on this MK, MK870, which I've seen... I think it sells regularly for fifty to sixty dollars, but I've I know I bought one of these for forty or like thirty-eight ninety-five, um, right? With coupons or discounts or whatever. But they usually can be found for fifty bucks or less, bare bone. So and I think it's a nice keyboard. Now it is closed source software, and again, like I said, it's tray mount, so it's not going to be a dream machine unless you're fine with tray mount. Which honestly, if the keyboard sounds good and it feels good. A steel plate isn't going to stop me. The majority of keyboards I've been typing on for most of my life have been tray mount, so <laughs> some just have a little bit more harsher of a bottom out, and especially with that steel plate, they can reverberate any ping that might exist in any of the, the switches that you have, and just act as a ping machine. So, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into replacing the plate with a PC plate on the MK870. Let's go. All right, to get everything started, I was gonna do a single video um, and do two different things, but I think I'm just gonna do in two separate videos. So this one, I'm just gonna replace the uh, steel plate with a PC plate, but with my other one, I'm gonna do a plateless install. Um, I've seen a couple of videos on the plateless install. I wasn't only able to find 
um, one older one with the PC plate, but I want to compare the two and see what kind of difference it makes. So for this one, I'm just going to stick to taking it apart. I'm not going to do any mods at this moment except for replacing the plate. And of course, I have to replace the stabilizers because the plate does not have the notches for them. So other than that, we'll do a comparison of it is uh, how it is stock and not. Now, when I come back, I'll probably do some mods to this one when I do that one plate list and try to apply the mods evenly so that we can compare what it sounds like with a PC plate and what it sounds like without a plate at all. So let's go ahead and get started and take these puppies off. Put those switches and key caps out of the way for right now. Go ahead and get my hot oil. Go ahead and get rid of these plugs. Well, not get rid of them, but just take them out. All right, so we got some screws down here. Just realized I was on pause, so um, just to catch up, I've opened up the case. Got the PCB out, um, the plates out of here, and I'm getting ready to install the screw and stabilizers. First, we put the dampener pad, the plate, back into its case, and we want to make sure that we're doing the USB port into the slot there. And that we're getting the studs that are there lined up. All right. All right. Now we put it on top. Oh, that's right. We need to do the front first. That we push down, making sure these are lined up. Just to make sure they're all clipped in. Alright. Now we can put these keys back on here. And here we are with the MK870 with the PC plate. Now, uh, this is an aftermarket plate, it's not official because it did not have uh, the the wedges or the little cutouts so that we could replace the um, the stock plate mounted stabilizers that we received. So we had to go with the ACO. Uh, PCB stabilizers. I will be coming to this one next week and do it a plateless install and then we're going to do head-to-head -head. Then I'm going to go and mod both of them and aim to get the thockiest sound profile that I can with both plateless and a PC plate. I have some ideas The construction of this case I think tends to lend itself to allow for some deep deep sounds. Now this one we changed the sound, that's for sure. It definitely does not sound like the steel plate, and I will play these side by side in a super cut after the break. Again, I didn't do any modifications. The only thing I did was change out the stabilizers because I had to, but other than that, everything else remained the same. But when we come back to it, perhaps do Tempest, tape, uh, PE foam, a couple other things, maybe some polyfill, maybe something else. I think we can get this this board to sound chunky and thocky. So, but until then, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound, stock sound test with the plate, the steel plate, and then the sound test with the PC plate that we just did and probably do a little super cut. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.